want to start by saying that it would certainly be very safe to say in this very prophetic time that peace and harmony are not readily available in today's world. Things continue heating up, prophetically speaking, but none of this should take any of us by surprise, guys, because Jesus said this is exactly what the whole world would look like just prior to his coming. And that's the reason for me to rejoice, just knowing my departure is at hand. The Lord has set the end of this age activities in motion. Guys, don't ever think that God's not in control. Jesus gave his disciples signs in Matthew chapter 24 and Luke 21 of what would be happening in this world at that time. In Luke 21, 26, Jesus said, people fainting, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Guys, he reassured them in John 16, 33, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Now guys, tribulations is plural here. That doesn't mean we will go through the tribulation. Hey, God's going to take us out of that, amen. He also gave them assurance that are meant for all of us today. Luke 21, 28 says, Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption draws near. The beginnings as described actually started started several years ago and have gained in number and frequency. What is true hope for all believers is that all prophecy that has been fulfilled to date has been 100% accurate. The remaining prophecies are of the good news, bad news scenarios. Bad news is this world is on the brink of entering a seven-year tribulation period that has never been before. Israel will be attacked by a coalition of Russia, Turkey, and Iran for their resources. But God, but God, they will have a but God moment and he will be their defender. But during that period of wrath, at least two-thirds of the world population will die. There will be an antichrist that will take charge. And, and at the last half of the seven years, he will be Satan-possessed. Literally, Satan-possessed, guys. It's all going to happen. But at the end of this this tribulation, Jesus will come in person to rule from Jerusalem for 1,000 years, then one final conflict, and then the eternity of heaven and hell will commence. What's the good news, guys? Joel 2, 32, Acts 2, 21, and Romans 10, 13 will be fulfilled. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is to fulfill the promise of the Father to keep all of those who received and accepted Jesus from the wrath. <laughs> That's 1 Thessalonians 1.10, 1 Thessalonians 5.9 and 10, and Revelation 3.10. God does not lie, as given in Numbers 23.19, Titus 1.2, and Hebrews 6.18. As to how this good news pertains to us, all who have truly received and accepted Jesus as Savior that are still alive at the sound of the trumpet of God will be taken up to meet Jesus in the air to be with him forever. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17 and 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53 if you want to look it up. The best part of that, all who are raptured, will be converted into forever immortal 
and imperishable bodies and with the mindset of the Savior. But in the meantime, guys, we need to continue trusting in the Lord as given to us in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. There are many gospel hymns about trusting in the Lord and putting all our faith and trust in him. One such song was written by N.B. Vandal, and it was published in, I think, 1934, and it was simply called After. The stimulus for this song reportedly came when his son was injured in an automobile accident. Fortunately, the son recovered, but uh, consider the message this hymn is left for all of us. The lyrics say, After the toil and trouble, there cometh a day of rest. After the weary conflict, peace on the Savior's breast. After the care and sorrow, the glory of light and love. After the wilderness journey, the Father's bright home above. After the night of darkness, the shadows all flee away. After the day of sadness, hope sheds her brightest ray. After the strife and struggle, the victory is won. After the work is over, the master's own word, well done. After the hours of chastening, the spirit made pure and bright. After the earth's dark shadow, clear is the light of light. After the guiding counsel, communion full and sweet. After the willing service, all laid at the Savior's feet. After the pain and sickness, the tears are all wiped away. After the flowers are gathered, no more of earth's decay. After the deep heart sorrow, an end of even strife. After the daily crosses, a glorious crown of life. Guys, there have been changes in the whole world just over the past few years that are heavy indicators this age is on the brink of ending. Now, more than ever, we need to be sharing the good news, the gospel, to get lost souls to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is active in making sure God's word does not go out in vain. In Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11, it says, For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there but waters the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, meaning it won't return to God void but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Guys, just about everywhere we turn, the evil one has forces that are trying to shut down anything to do with Jesus. We as the Lord's disciples, all true believers are being called haters because we will not participate in the abominations that are abounding. If the truth be known, we hate no one, only the sinful actions and attitudes of those who are choosing to follow Satan. We need to be in prayer daily for all our loved ones, especially those who have not received and accepted Jesus as their Savior. Guys, as Faithful prayer warriors, we ask that the Holy Spirit provide something or someone that may influence a lost soul to call out for salvation. In our daily prayers, we should even ask the Lord to touch the hearts of those who would be considered our enemies. I personally do not wish to see anyone at the great white throne judgment and ultimately end up in the lake of eternal fire. Guys, 
our eternal home with Jesus has been personally made by him for all who will be with him forever. There is nothing on this earth that could even come close to the glory and majesty of our eternal home. Yet, so many put all their efforts and resources into the things of this earth that will all pass away. Jesus will force no one to seek him, but he is there 24-7 to receive a call from anyone who does call out. He will turn no one away. The only sin that is unforgivable unforgivable is to take your last breath here without Jesus. That is exactly what blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is. Living your whole life and never heeding to the call of the Holy Spirit. All else can be forgiven and will be in accordance with 1 John 1 verses 8 through 10. Uh, Verse 9 specifically states, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Guys, today would not be too early to call on Jesus, as tomorrow could just possibly be too late. It's an eternal decision that can only be made by each individual. And the outcome is totally their choice. Guys, how many of you will join me in saying, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Guys, I pray you may have found some encouragement in this message. My my body is tired. It's, it's weak. I I thank the Lord. I'm going to keep saying I'm Jesus strong. Amen. But guys, I just have a extremely strong feeling. Oh man, I felt God that we ain't going to be here much longer. Love you guys. And we will be seeing you shortly in the clouds of glory. Maranatha. Father, heal each one within the sound of our voice, God. Fill them with hope. Fill them with health. Fill them with supernatural strength, O God. And if any one of them needs to become born again, save them to the uttermost. Lord, when we are weak and weary, help us to remember from where our hope truly comes. By your grace, keep us from misplacing our faith in worldly things for support. Strengthen us to endure all hardships with confidence, knowing every promise you made will come true. We ask you would rise within each of us and empower us to live better and never bitter. Be our shalom peace. Keep us within your secret place, high above all turmoils of life. Be God our healer. We ask when we are sick, you would saturate each of us with the healing balm of Gilead, causing us to be free from all pain and sickness. Be God our deliverer and free us from all bondages and evil of this world. We ask you would always restore, renew, and revive each of us all the days of our lives. Be our strength when we're feeling we cannot go on. Free us from the weight of all worry and fear. Give us rest from the struggles we daily encounter 
that are wearing us down. We will remember that you, Lord, are with us. You are here. You are powerful. And you are in control. Thank you, Lord, that we can put our hope in you because you are our hope. Though the world may be falling apart all around us, we will yet praise your name. We will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and our fortress. Our God will always be our wraparound shield all the days of our lives. You are our Savior. You are our God. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that we can always turn to you and find peace. Be our peace today and always. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. And we will believe by faith that all these things are done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Guys, we can talk a little bit about the gospel that's found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Verse 4 says, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Amen. Guys, those are shouting words. Yes, they are. I'm just going to turn it over to Susie and let her present the ABCs of salvation. Hallelujah. And how many know that salvation is as easy as ABC? Yes, it is. The ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. This is where the godly sorrow leads to genuine repentance for sinning against the righteous God. And there is a change of heart. We change our mind and God changes our hearts and regenerates us from the inside out. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins and was buried and that God raised Jesus from the dead. This is trusting with all your heart that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. Call upon the name of the Lord. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and will believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Every single person who has ever lived since Adam will bend their knee and confess with their mouth, that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. If you want to become born again today, then say something like this, Lord, you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. I confess now that Jesus is my Lord And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. For it is with my heart I believe and am justified. And it is with my mouth that I confess and am saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in you will never be put to shame. You said that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and cleansing me and forgiving all my sins, past, present, and future, and forgiving me eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you have prayed this prayer, you are now a child of God. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. 
For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house, and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, Watch. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed.' 